let's focus on the challenges that come with digital transformation. Uh, let's go around the table and introduce ourselves. Um, Mark? I'm Mark Hunter, the sales hunter. Glad to be here. Good afternoon, everybody. This is Bill Ball from Boreside. I do sales enablement and training and talent here. Juliana Stancampiano. I'm the CEO of Oxygen, um, based out in Seattle, founded it in 2008 and have um, been around and in the sales enablement, enablement industry since then. Britton Manasco. I am the head of a company here based in Austin, Texas called Visible Impact, I'm the author of a book called Next Era Selling, and I'm pleased to be joining you today. Britton, what is your vision? What are you on the uh, sort of learning curve uh, transforming digitally where everything is going to be digitized? There's this fascination with digitizing everything. And, and you know, let me just play the, play the skeptic, the curmudgeon a little bit, and suggest that maybe this is kind of our era's re-engineering or e-business, what probably needs to be recognized a little bit more, and let's take it back to the sort of sales front, is the real human interactions and interplay associated with, it, with this. So digital uh, technology and processes can enable us, can streamline processes, but at the end of the day, um, you know, well, this work can be done by bots, by robots, if we're not bringing the human element. And I say the human element in terms of the face-to-face, human-to-human, and, and when I say, you know, we can be virtual, we're virtual here, but it's personal. You know, we're, we're seeing each other, we're looking in each other's eyes. Um, and we've got to bring that human element across the digital networks. We've got to bring that human element across our, our companies and our supply chains. All that has to happen, and, and that shouldn't get lost in this digital transform, transformation drumbeat. So would you rather buy a car where you have to sign like 40 times or uh, do it with a digital signature and, and spend only three minutes on it? I would do it with the digital signature, but I'd love to talk to somebody who's going to share with me the vision of why this, this car is going to answer my, my needs, my objectives, my concerns. I'd like to look them in the eye. I may not have to go to the dealership, but I'd like to look them in the eye and have that conversation. You're saying that the trust comes from looking in people's eyes and uh, all the rest of the knowledge can be digitized. But let's have human to human conversations and we can do it at scale because I don't have to get in a car to participate on your great show. Juliana, what, what's your take? Isn't the uh, digitalization part of the oxygen that you're delivering to companies? And I find that fascinating. You know, a little bit to your point, Gerhard, yeah, I'd rather do a digital um, signature any day. And I would think that would make me more productive. <laughs> like, seems counterintuitive, right? So, right. Uh, you know, and, and then on the other side, we heard... Um, a speaker from Accenture talk about, hey, in order to progress with technology, we've got to take the unhuman out of our organizations and make them more human. And I think that's, I believe that's a lot of what we're seeing. Technology is amazing. It does amazing things. And there are still people and we still like to interact as people. And we need to remember that we're all uh, human. And how do we make our conversations and our interactions more active versus I think technology has made a lot of our interactions very passive. There are businesses now that take all the crazy data that you have and actually make it actionable because people can't figure out what to do with it or they don't have the time or they don't realize they have the time. Um, so it's, it's interesting, but, but I will say that I'm with everyone who has spoken before. I think um, sales still have to involve a conversation. Um, even, even the other part of my business that uses conversation is, uh, as game film, and, and that allows us to do amazing things in the onboarding process. We're seeing other people take that same kind of technology and make it so artificially intelligent that, you know, at some point are we saying that we could write a better conversation through AI than a salesperson could conduct with another human? I'm not sure about that. The challenge with salespeople and getting drowned and all that stuff is, Part of the onboarding, part of everything else we've been talking about is how are you leveraging all of the, the, the data that you're getting, you know, and, and did you not believe in science before you started working here? Because guess what? You're going to believe in it now.
And I see a lot of sales and MLM people now saying, why don't we cut down on some of the apps that run on, uh, on Salesforce because they're not helping us improve productivity, that they're not helping us humanize the organization, they're not helping us close more sales. As a matter of fact, Jim Dickey and his organization found that the uh, ability to close sales has gone down over the last five years with more technology. And uh, where every, every sales technology vendor says, um, our solution can help you free the salesperson's time so they can spend more time face-to-face -face with customers. And I've heard that pitch for 10 years and it doesn't happen. So the question is, why is technology such a double-edged sword and how should sales and management managers think about technology so we can optimize everything? Well, I would just say one of interesting factors in this sort of freemium SaaS era, it's easier than ever to put distractions and options and shiny, you know, uh, silver bullets in front of people. And it creates a lot of havoc, even within mm -hmm. a, a, a work environment, because anybody can sort of invite, um, you know, the camel's nose under the tent, <laughs> you know, and everybody's vying for, let, look at how cool this is. No, look at how cool this is. It's a really strange phenomenon, and the managers have to sort it out. And I, I'd say they keep saying we're suffering from tech fatigue. More becomes less because of all the digitization of everything. We have more, 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 and it really makes us less productive. But why are we so fascinated with technology? I remember when Dreamforce started, the first Dreamforce had like 360 people, and now they're expecting 150,000. It's access, Gerhard, it's access. And, and, and uh, this is an old trope at this point, right? But, but the, the, the buyer's journey of access has changed and they have access to just as much, and in some cases more, depending on the, the industry and the organization, information to solutions as, as the salesperson does. So the salesperson's no longer an educator, I suppose they can be a challenger, right? But, but, but they're no longer an educator. And, and it's, it's, so it's challenged everyone, not only to be mired in all of the different channels of communication, right? Hey, have you tried communicating with your, your, your prospects over Twitter and, and see if you can cast a really wide net and see if anybody follows you? You know, like there's so many different channels at this point. And then there's, and, and then there's also just being able to get to the buyer's basic business challenges with that buyer being way more educated. Everybody has FOMO, fear of missing out. I've got to have this app. I've got to have this. 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 And it's, it's the way customers look at things. That's why we wind up with so many no decisions. Well, they looked at it. Nope. FOMO, I think, destroys more business opportunities than we will ever realize in terms of productivity and sales. Do you think that uh, the rate of change, to, uh, change in technology has outstripped our capacity to adapt? Absolutely. And, and we don't have a framework we don't have a perspective yet. We don't have a point of view on how to think through these solutions. And I think that's what we're going to be going through in the next few years is trying to get that kind of shared and established framework for how to make these decisions on what matters and what doesn't, how to prioritize what does and what doesn't. I think some, some companies have figured that out. Uh, more have not. Solutions. I think there's a lot of solutions that are coming to market that are looking for a problem to solve. But we'll come out with a solution. We don't know what the problem is, but we got a great solution. Well, I get those calls uh, weekly from uh, people with uh, uh, accents from all over the world. And they're very, very bright people. And they have technology. And uh, they have brilliant ideas. But they don't understand sales. And that's how Salesforce.com has come to 2,948 uh, application solutions for sales organizations. So when you go to Dreamforce, it looks like a technology flea market where you don't know what fits what and how does it all fit together. So I think it would be a good idea for sales enablement leaders to look into that so that the, the paradigm will shift that apps are not going to be designed by some uh, people in the back office that uh, have a lot of big brains and they're very creative, but that uh, supply and demand meet and say, this is what we need. Look at the sales enablement platform. 
look at the, the, the tool, Sales Enablement Society Platform. Is that the best tool that exists out there? I, Bill, uh, you, you're the funny guy. What, what do you have to say about that? Juliana laughed first is what I have to say about that. First of all, I think that we're rotating the conversation to think that technology, um, that they have the answers versus why aren't we saying that we're going to go out and talk to customers and ourselves and let's come up with the right needs and let's gather our requirements. I've done this with a couple technology companies lately and it's fascinating. It's like, no, I don't want it to do that. Nope, don't want it to do that either. That looks amazing, not necessary. But if it can do X, Y, and Z, totally we'll use it. Um, and I think we just have to take you know, the power back from the technology. I feel like we're letting technology run us instead of us running technology. And I just don't understand why we're even having that conversation. Alexa, what's the solution? <laughs> Actually, my kids say that Siri's smarter than Alexa. Whoa! So. That, <laughs> I, think that, it, I think it's buy out. more yeah. Amazon. I think it's buy more Amazon stock. Isn't that what Alexa says? I want to go back to what Juliana said, and uh, and then we need to wrap it up. And uh, there should be a better relationship between uh, supply and demand. And I don't understand why people call me because I'm only one brain and I know uh, it's not big enough to understand all the complexities involved in sales technology. And I wish those people uh, went to a committee of let's say 10 sales or 12 sales enablement uh, experts and have them be sort of the, the people that give them advice and say, this is where you should go, or this is where you go off off road, and uh, you're going to risk all the money that uh, the people that trust you have invested in you. So there, there has to be a better way. Gerhard, you're not alone. Um, you know, I would say this is part of the mission of the Sales Enablement Society. Right, Bill, you started out with something funny, so end us. I just, with something. I just hate the term thought leader. Um, I, th I think any ditto head can jump on LinkedIn and suddenly become a thought leader. And, and, and people have gotten hired over that. And I'm sure they've gotten fired too. But like, I, I cannot imagine the amount of this is a complete side note. I cannot Im imagine the amount of job creation that ditto heading has, has, you know, thought leadership on LinkedIn has done. I think conversation leadership is fantastic. I mean, this, this goes back to what we were starting at at the beginning of the conversation with onboarding. How many, how many of the people that conduct onboarding or have designed these programs have gone through their own onboarding? There, there isn't, like, there's so much rush that getting back to the capitalism, I'll try to tie all this together for you guys. Um, there's, there's so much rush with getting a product to market, and, and I was just listening to a podcast about what fires you should totally ignore for your customers when you have a brand new product. And, and like, I mean, it's crazy, it's crazy the risk that these people take to try to be first with something. So that's why we've got the app problem. Um, there's, there's no, you know, we, we, we can go Ori Brofman and, and, and go white space, right? There's, there's no white space, but people aren't taking the time to be accountable or reflect. And that certainly can get driven by conversation. Britain, final word. You know, I, I think my takeaway on this is that we're, we're making progress. I mean, people often feel very confused and lost, and, and we're making progress. We're, we're, we're finding a way together, and we're working together to do that. And you, nobody's, nobody's an island alone. You know, Gerhard, you're not the only one trying to bring markets together and make conversations happen and lead conversations. It's happening, and it's accelerating. So there are counter forces to the confusion. And I think that's all very positive and uplifting. And, and that's the spirit in which I, I take these things. Thank you, Britton. I love your positivity, Juliana. You know, I appreciate being able to have the conversation with everybody. I think it's awesome. I will say from, from what Britton just said, I know that when I'm confused, which tends to be a lot, and I don't know the answer, which is also a lot, um, I know I'm gonna learn something. And I find that so fascinating. And I think, you know, in all the confusion that we may, that we're all kind of sitting in and sales enablement is, is in, I wonder if we just embrace that. And like, I don't know, I don't know the answer, but, and I'm kind of confused, but through that, there's going to be some clarity. And I think it's awesome that we're all in this together to figure some of that out. And also thank you for declaring best practices as obsolete.
Mark? Alexa and Siri are here to help us find the solution. But you know what? It's going to be our own intellect that really has to identify the problem first. We need to spend more time identifying the problem before we jump to a solution. Thanks, everybody. Tune in next Wednesday at 1 p.m. And if you like this, click the like button. And if you find it interesting, please share with everybody. Thanks, everybody.